witnessed what greatness is all about. People should appreciate what you get to watch. It was truly one of the greatest games in the history of football. It really was. I mean, the end, back and forth, back and forth, back and Slugging forth. Slugging each other late. Back and forth. The 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 topsy-turvy nature of it. Um, you know, everything. There's that that video. And it's funny. When you do the electric chair, you legitimately, like, forget you're on the electric chair. You're just watching the game, hoping your team wins. But there was the play on that drive uh, to take the lead before overtime where – Brady throws the ball off Gronk's hands. It's intercepted, and I just kind of fell down. I mean, the game was over. Because that, Done. They're dead. And then, you know, I'm, I hear, I believe it was Nance say there was a flag, and I, like, pop up, and it's it's my own Undertaker gif. Like, I have my own Undertaker gif. Now, somebody put the Undertaker music to it, like a stoolie, and it's fucking brilliant. Like, I don't want to suck my own dick too hard. I watch it, like, a thousand no, times. No, never. I watched um, the Gronk the Brady Instagram video with Gronk. I watched that a million times. It is that, and it doesn't play for radio because they don't say anything right. uh, in the Gronk, uh, in the, I should keep calling it the Brady Gronk video because Brady made it. The Brady Gronk, if you haven't seen it, like if you're driving, jump out the window of your car and just let your car smash into somebody. It's that <laughs> important to see it. It's the greatest piece of video I've ever seen on the internet. Really. It summed up every feeling, every emotion I ever had over the past, like, 20 years. But it's just Brady, like, smirking into the camera with Gronk kind of being Gronk and dancing to, to Diddy's bad boys still here. And people just hate us so much. They really do. The hatred of people are like, get these fucking guys out of there, and you can't get rid of us. We're still here. Still the Kings, still the bad boys. That video, I watch it. I was in bed. It's like old school, um, and I always get mad at people. It's like when your team wins, you work all day. I, I was up till 4 a.m. I mean, everything I could consume, I want to consume. Well, Tommy Social now is everywhere. He's got quotes. He's dropping videos. He's I mean, all everything. over the fucking he, place. Him and Belichick being like, I love you. Him telling Hogan, like, we're too slow, we're too old, like, fuck that. Him DMing you. He DM'd me uh, LFG mm-hmm. on, like, uh, the story of us reacting when we won. And, and to be honest, a lot of the Brady stuff, I don't love the social. Like, I don't love when he gets the other athletes involved in the pregame for whatever reason. I'd rather just be, like, I love Ortiz. I love, but, I mean, Shara, is, some of the guys he puts in, like, they're just, it's hard to have anybody in the class of Tom Brady. Like the only guys who should make like cameos in Tom Brady videos are like maybe Michael Jordan and like he's that elite. Um, but this video he made with Gronk, it, it was something special and everything. There's so many videos, so many, and and you got to go both ways. You got to go all the people who said they were dead and love writing them off, and I know they do it for like looks and you know to get, but it it. It's just so good to be so right. I put that video. Frankie, do you have the video I made on the beaches of Miami? This was after we lost our second game to Pittsburgh. And I was it, we lost to uh, Miami on that horrible, like, flea flicker thing. Yep. And then we lost to Pittsburgh. And I went on the record that says, I no longer expect them to win the Super Bowl, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I was starting to doubt them a little bit for the first time in ever. It's like, whoa, they lost two in a row this late. And then Tom Brady simply just had that one Instagram post that just said, still here. Like, after, like what, what's everyone talking about? We're, I'm still here. And when I read that and saw that Instagram post, I was, I was literally getting one of the great tans that I, any human has ever had in Miami. I was there for 10 days. I got up, and, and I made this emergency press conference the second I saw that. Play. All right, here's the deal. Listen, it's Sunday. Yeah, I'm on vacation. It's vacation week. All you Catholics, you do your shit. I I go to the beach. Whatever. Jew life. Listen, that's not important. Here's the fucking thing, all right? People are writing the Patriots off. Even I was like, oh, I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl anymore. I won't be surprised. And then Brady did this today. Put an Instagram post. It said, still here. Two words. The one to turn to. Two words. Still here. And it got me thinking. You know what? Everyone's saying, oh, we can't do this. We can't do it. Belichick. Brady. Two words, still here. 
until you beat us, until you put the fork in us, the stake, the knife, we are the kings. 15 years, the two best to ever do it, still here. We ain't going anywhere. It's totally changed my motivation, my outlook. We're going to kill the Bills, then kill the Jets, then we're going to kill whoever we play. What, a rookie quarterback in Baltimore at San Diego can't win a freaking game? Fat Andy Reid, I'm worried about those losers, those, those bums. Who, who in the NFC? The, the Saints can't score anymore. The Cowboys are a joke. The Bears, they play good defense, but Big Cat's fat. You think I give a fuck? <laughs> Still here. Cheap shot. Still here. The end of the dynasty? No, 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 no. We tell you when it's over. We say when it's over. It's not even close. I'll see you in Atlanta. Still here. And, I mean, outside the fact that I mentioned the Rams, which I've given me a little pause. I mentioned every team <laughs> but them. Yeah. A uh, concerning. It, it's so true, and everyone wrote us off. And then we come and we have these games. And, I, and Jerry, I, he may have already published it, but I was texting with Jerry, he so he did publish he it. it yeah. So what is the title of his blog? Um, r- from the Tuck Rule to Edelman's Muff: A History of the Patriots Being Left for Dead in the Playoffs. So it's like what games? And, and there's no franchise with this. We're going over it. G- games in which the Patriots have been dead, no pulse, over. Like that Undertaker moment I had yesterday when I was down. It's like, oh, we lost. Especially like, because that's been the flavor of the playoffs. Like off the hand, the 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 through the wide receiver's hands tip. You can see it from a mile away, picked. Like that happened. It's Obviously, old. that's how the Saints beat the Eagles. Then the, that's how the Saints kicked off the game against the Rams. And then you saw it last night. And you're thinking, this is just how this fucking year is going. It, it, it's, it's over. It, it that game, if that that flag was, and I had no idea they didn't mention the flag. So it's like I had no idea it was thrown. Until I heard flag, and then I pop up. So they, like I said, a Barstool person put the Undertaker music on. It's perfect. And I still was like, this. I don't think this is. I, th- I thought it was going to be like a block or something after the play. And it's offsides. And suddenly it's, it's we're back. So the game's over this Patriot dynasty. And, and, you know, it's one of those things with anything when you're in the moment of true greatness. And this is true greatness. This is something that even the Patriot haters will be proud to say they lived through. Like it's, regardless if you liked or didn't like Michael Jordan, you're like, I watched Jordan play. It's like something that only will come around once. Everyone will appreciate what we're watching because it's the greatest football team that's ever lived. The the greatest dynasty, greatest franchise. So sometimes you don't, you got to take a step back and be like, wow, what am I watching? But I was talking to Jerry because we all, I talked, here's who I talked to last night. To just congratulate okay. Jerry, Edelman, Van Noy, David Andrews, just all congratulating each other, being like, "We did it." Jerry in good company. Yeah, well, I mean, he's he's as big a fan as anybody. So, um, and I'm like, we, I said we should do an article ranking their greatest dead moments from the Tuck Rule. Again, I remember watching that. It's like, okay, it's over. It's like that. Who knew that role existed? Last night, Seattle at the one yard line. Yep. Like I was slumped. Like. All right, it's over. There's, we, we're it's out of time. They're just gonna run it, and that's the end of the game. Twenty-eight three. Yep. Jerry, I think, puts in the ten-point comeback versus the Jags, which mm-hmm. I never truly thought. I guess there's that penalty on Miles Jack running the interception back. Um, I think he had one more game in there. He added a few more. So he had yesterday down ten to Jags. Does he rank them? No, just chronologically. I'm going backwards. Seattle is first in goal from the five. Uh, Ravens lead by fourteen twice. Twenty fourteen. Playoff game. You sound horrible, Tom. Yeah, yeah. You might be the sickest person <laughs> well, I've I ever heard of. Right? Get kicked out here. Yeah, I don't know if we could be get in out. this room. Get out. I'm out. All right. <laughs> I, mean, I, w- I was waiting. Christ. I was like, is, is nobody going to say anything? I mean, <laughs> been like that all day in the shit. office? Yeah. I'm, get out. Yeah, I'm sick. Get out. <laughs> oh my I didn't even God. let him get coffee. Goodness. Get him out. That was crazy. Oh, you got your coffee, too. No, I didn't <laughs> oh, let, did him. Not let him out. No, I wasn't no. sure if he was doing like an imitation or something. I'm, so you knew about this, and he's been I didn't know he's that sick. Well, he's on the other side of the... Not to mention the fact that it's a thousand degrees and that makes like germs like a heat box. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't feel hot safe in here, in here right now currently. That was gross. He cost me a hundred grand. This guy did. Tommy uh, did. Tommy this weekend, pretty much, because oh, I was so bad presence. at gambling, and I'm like, come, I want to make him come because he got sick. And he's like, I'm so sick, I don't think I can come. I'm like, are you really sick or you just don't want to come? He's like, I'm really sick. I'll come. I'm like, all right, it's not worth it, because what's the point of money if you're dead? But he sounds <laughs> awful. 
This whole place has to be fumigated. I mean, that was unbelievable. I've never he kept, I was like, is this, was at what point is this going to be stopped? Oh, um, poor Tommy. But it is interesting. So the games I'd put, those four games are the ones. That be, those are four games that if, like, you know, there's often, like, computer generations, like, percent to win in game. Yep. I think the Patriots had flatlined in all of those games. Which one do you feel like they were the most dead? I've, all, I, I would say... I thought they – I th- it's one of the two. It's Seattle or last night. Because last night it's like, okay, or oh, the tuck rule. Those yeah. three. Seattle, though, it's like they were s- – that was, who could have seen that but, coming? But, but there was still plays left. Like in the tuck rule and yesterday – It's over. Like I watched the play unfold. And I had no idea I even had a chance. It's like, okay, we lost. Right. And then, like, I mean, if you watch, did you see the gif of me yesterday? Yes. So, I mean, I was dead. Like, I was on the ground. It was over. I, I was, I could, that was the first moment I thought in that game, oh, my God, they're going to lose. Well, it was, it was over. Was, I mean, they had timeouts, but it's over. And I just didn't know the flag was thrown. And then you hear a flag, and then still, then my face is perfect. It's like I'm just kind of staring and be like, no, no. And then we go nuts. It's like we score a touchdown. And the tuck rule is the same. I watched the tuck rule, and you see it, and it took a while to challenge it. But when you watch it, it's like, okay, we lost. Like, that's it's clearly open. a fumble. It's, yep. And then you start explaining the rules. But th- So the tuck rule is so long ago, I kind of it's such a different – like the Patriots had never won before, so it was a very different vibe. I know I thought all three of those games were – I don't know how you rank them. All three of those were over. Over. That we weren't going to stop fucking beast mode from scoring if they ran the ball. We had 0% chance of stopping them. Zero. Yeah, and it just felt like because they got that, that fluke catch where it bounced yeah. off like his fucking knee. No, that knee, was over. And it was just like they're just not going to win this game. Right. Those three games. I guess yesterday it happened so quick. I don't know. Tuck rule. Beast mode, and last night, three. I guess that would be it. The, and then four being 28-3. But 28-3, I've said a million times. That I never thought was over. Every time we needed a play, we got the play. These are three instances where, like, the plays with the – well, that's why I put, I guess, Seattle third because that play didn't happen. Like, you could fumble. The other two, I watched the games end in my mind. It's like I watched it on the screen. It's like I saw what happens. like, okay, we lost. It's over. The plays have happened. Our destiny is written. And then something happens after the play. It's like that reverses time. It's like back to the future. We go change time. Last night makes you think there's like divine intervention I or mean, something. They, Him everything. just lining off. off like, it's like, <laughs> what are you? neutral zone infraction. <laughs> what the fuck? And he was oh very God. off. It wasn't like a oh, slight. It was the right it, call. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it's what, like, how does that happen how does it happen in their favor on like the worst the like the worst thing that could have actually happened for them then gets flipped and is just erased because yeah. of an unimaginable error and the weird and they're thing back is, it's I feel just like neutral zone fuck. infractions you usually see the flag like an offside i just didn't like nobody saw it. like i didn't hear any any it no, was i feel like it was one two or like even the flag graphic came up really late every was just like wait what I've watched that video so many times because it gives me joy of me when I'm laying there. And you can see, you, I, like I said, I think Nant says there's a flag, and that's when all of a sudden my head <laughs> rises above like the Burger King. It's like, wait, what? It's unbelievable. And to go in, that was one of – there's so many different things to rank as a Patriot fan. That was one of the great victories this franchise has ever had. It really is. Because you got Showtime Mahomes, everyone's saying is God. You're going to arguably top one, two, three hardest places to play. Yep. Versus a team that didn't seem to be the same old Chiefs. They destroyed the Colts before. Everyone's written this team off. And, and you go in and get that victory and just shut people up. Now, it, there's nothing people – I mean, the haters will say the same. I've said – I. obviously, winning Super Bowls matters, and I want to win the Super Bowl more than anything. I love it. But in the in, when we look back in 50 years, this Super Bowl means nothing, like whether they win or lose. I really believe that. Taking you, Super you Bowl wins out of it is just one of your favorite wins of all time? Yeah, oh, yeah, I just said that, yeah. 
It's one of the most satisfying wins of all time. And for some reason, I felt there was more on the line to get to the Super Bowl. Like, yeah, I want to win. I want to finish it. But it's like when you look back at other than the fact we're tied with the Steelers for most franchises, Brady would tie the most franchise ever. People aren't one. You have as many Super Bowls as he already has. He's won a, a lot. He's already lost a few. Like, does it matter? Six and five and four. Six. It's like. His legacy, this legacy is sealed, regardless of what happens the next. Yeah, time. I agree. He's just kind of padding the lead at this point in yeah. terms of greatest of all time. Uh, but yeah, they, so no one's ever gonna be vaguely close to what's going on. Yeah, I do think what it would be six and three versus five and four yeah. Super Bowl record. That's maybe the only thing anyone would ever talk about. But at the end of the day, it's definitely not gonna. The matter. only thing Nobody I can really think is we tie the Steelers. Right, like the Steelers have six, we have five, but they have it through multiple. They've got and six in franchise history, franchise. and Tom Brady would obviously have six on his own. And we'd have six franchises, yeah. Tom Brady would have tied his own personal Super Bowls with the most of any team ever. God, well, and, crazy. I mean, to think about it, like, if they actually, if they win this Super Bowl, then you could look and think, okay, if Tom Brady's got two or three or four more years, he could actually win himself more Super Bowls than any other franchise has ever won. Which may motivate him. I am on He the- seems more, like... Isn't it interesting that he seems it seems to matter more to him this year? He, he seems yesterday he seemed well, much happier than he has in it, the past. It, he it's just seemed almost happy. Like I feel like the Brady Six. Yeah. You know, I feel like he is motivated when he feels he's been slighted. Right. And he definitely feels like with the exception of like Dave Portnoy, that everybody wrote them off. And it's like, fuck you, how dare you write me off? That's what it is. And how dare you write him off? It's like, how dare you? Who in the right mind could be like, I, as I said in that Miami video, the, and you don't have to kill the Patriots once. You got to kill them like 100 times because they'll keep coming back to life. I don't know how, but they do. It looks like, I mean, I saw it. I saw them die yesterday. I saw it, and guess what? They weren't dead. And I've seen it a lot now. That was an unbelievable moment. That was just shocking that they're just nope. They're just they, yeah. you just can't kill them. Yeah, they refuse to. They refuse to be killed. We're back again. A couple things I would say the so uh, I have like a couple different feelings about the Patriots overall. First of all, like the whole there is a reason that a lot of people love to hate. Patriots fans around this time and it's because of every word that was from that video that you said everybody doesn't want you to be right everybody doesn't think you deserve to be that right and that cocky about something and that's infuriating however another side of me that just loves sports and I enjoy and I've said the same thing about like watching certain golfers obviously golf's my thing I enjoy when something's clearly a part of like a bigger legacy and watching Tom Brady and the Patriots a part of me does root for them just because any other team that pops up, it just feels like they're going to be a one-off. There's so much parity in the league, whether it's the Chiefs this year or it's the Seahawks another year or whatever, whereas when Tom Brady's doing it and the Patriots are doing it, it feels like something that you'll be talking about forever for the next 20, 30, 40 years of like, oh, yeah, I remember that game. I remember these parts of, of the dynasty and the run. So I do root for the Patriots in that regard. It's just frustrating that you get to be so happy. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're a Tiger fan, Like, I don't know if you I I think there's similar stuff. It's like, do you want to see people new faces and fresh faces or are you more interested when Tigers evolve? Like for people who I don't understand the philosophy. Oh, it's boring. The Patriots are in it. But they're what moves the needle. Like, that's all anybody talks. about. And I agree with you. I disagree with that other that like, oh, it's boring because they're in it again. No, that makes it more meaningful because it's part of something bigger it's like a it's a longer story basically it's a deeper longer story that'll be written that'll go down in the annals of nfl history and this this is is part of it the best quarterback who's ever lived probably the best player the best coach there's never we're never going to see anything like this this extended period of dominance and they do it in so many different ways and yesterday like brady did not have a perfect game didn't matter he's perfect when he needs to be Although then you could be like, well, he threw that interception, but no, it he mean, did. It like been, that was could have been three interceptions. But it's, and it's like a coulda, woulda, see, uh, like Eli Manning, Asante Samuel dropped an interception. You know, I mean right. that like no one, you can't. It is what it is, and it is. Yeah, it's it's crazy how how like it feels like it gets repeated over and over again. Like the horrible interception he threw yesterday, even a couple of horrible picks that he threw, and, and the reason they were down like twenty eight to three, and then he launches like the greatest comeback. Ever and yesterday he has he did it in moment. Seattle too. He threw a, a red zone, right. interception in the end zone in like the first half, 
or maybe even third quarter, I don't remember, but then versus Seattle at the best defense at the time was like perfect in the fourth. He was, I mean, the throws, it's not even that. Some of their third, what were they, how many third and tens did they have? Every third down in overtime. I'm like, if they don't get this, they're going to have to go because if we give it to the Chiefs, it's over. Right. They'll need a field goal. I think it was three third downs, three third and tens, and he just throws, I mean, balls that like we would catch because he wedges them in between the numbers like you have no choice but to catch the ball they're so perfectly thrown (laughs) in little things it was crazy did you hear too tony romo calling every play there was a drive there where it was Uh, like people have been going nuts on Romo. it was crazy but i mean i'm not i'm not in on the romo hype i i i mean he was a quarterback so it's like yeah when brady goes like this i could tell he's killing the play too he's audibling but romo can tell based on the defense what they should do can't do it apparently when as a quarterback, but can do it from way up in the booth. Well, I was yeah, going to say. Can't do it as a quarterback, <laughs> just in the booth. Well, you are. You're kind of taking a guy that could do it to a degree on field level, and now you're putting him up in the fucking sky. Right. And you're, obviously, he's going to be able to have a pretty good read on it. Right. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, he also says a lot of ridiculous shit during the game. Like, he says every dr- drive is make a break with, like, midway through the third. It's just his <laughs> general, like, kid like enthusiasm. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. It was. I mean, I'm operating on no sleep now. I'll be like, no sleep. So in fact, so this will be fourth Super Bowl. Yeah. Th- that you've been to? Yeah. And and we've been, no, it's my fifth Super Bowl and that I've been to through Barstool. Like, we're going for Barstool. Barstool, like Super we Bowl week. We we're shit. going yep. for work, and the Patriots have been in four of them. It is. That's incredible. That's shocking. Yeah, it makes everything better. It makes next week bigger and better, oh, obviously. Oh, Rough and Rowdy is going to be, like, impossible to get into now because all the local media from Boston will be there. I already talked to Zolak. Uh, he's another guy I talked to yesterday, so he's going to join us and call one of the fights at Rough and Rowdy, which will be absolutely <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's going to be something. On the mic. I mean, it is. I've said it. It's like a reunion, especially being here in New York. I'll see a lot of friends and people I haven't seen in a while. It's like, oh. It's the it's the New England it's the Boston like family reunion week. That's and you really guys what just get is. to go to a different city yeah. every year. Yeah, right. It it's is great. honestly like God, that. What a life you is, lead, which is it, outrageous. It, it, it's great. It's like all it literally is. You take over a city, and by the way, we're gonna take over the whole city because L.A. has no fans, so they ain't traveling. So nope. it's gonna be all Patriot fans. It's going to be a great week. I think the game will be good. I've said this a thousand times. Anybody who listens, I expect the Patriots to win because when plays have to be made, they generally make them. But in this era of parity, these teams are so close that all these games generally come down to one play here or there, a bounce, a what, a call. You can look at this game. Could we have lost? Yes. Could we have lost to the uh, Falcons? Yes. Could we have lost to the Seahawks? Yes. Could we have beaten the Giants twice? Yes. Could we have beaten the Eagles? Yes. You're just, when you're in these games, and I assume this Rams game will be the same, it'll be one or two plays here or there that make the whole thing. Um, and if if we win, I and you said, Dave, you can tell Tom Brady what to do, I'd say walk up onto the podium with your sixth Lombardi and retire. Go out on top. Do you think there's any chance that happens? I think slim. But because I know he knows he can still play and he probably can for a couple more years, I don't ever want him to go out with a loss. Has anybody ever retired with a win? I doubt it. Mm, not, I mean, not on top of the way Brady would go out if he I did mean, retire. I'm talking, I'm talking like a prime, like a Montana or a Favre or somebody who's like already known as. A, a great, I guess Manning. I was going to say Peyton, like but it was kind Super of Bowl. right. Yeah, he but was that was dead. a defensive Super Bowl. Everybody right. knew he was kind of there to just hand off the ball, basically, right. and make sure nothing stupid happened. But I mean, he, I mean, he did. He did to, retire won, with the Super Bowl. They won like despite him. Who? Elway. Yeah, Elway retired after the second. Yeah. But Brady seems too involved with everything right now. To uh, the, the idea of him retiring seems so far off. Well, he that. I said this when people were saying he had slowed down. He had it. Anyone who said, like, noodle arm, they weren't watching. He he's throws the ball just as well as I mean, he, he was throwing has. missiles in the freezing cold in the fourth quarter when the, everything mattered. Yeah, he, he hasn't, like, slowed down. He hasn't slowed down. 
That's what I don't get. People like, oh, we lost the Super Bowl last year by one play. And he scored like – he threw for like 9,000 yards. He had like the best game of all time. He hasn't slowed down. So he can – there is no sign of age on him. Certainly not his mind. Nothing. But it's his skill too. And his quotes are getting better and better. Oh, man. Yeah. That, that, the their bodies – the cold dropping. effect their bodies been on my mind. Ooh. Oh, he's been dropping quotes everywhere. I completely changed how I was going to bet yesterday when I saw, like, I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Just went straight Pat's money line. It, I don't know it, how you could have money line that. as well. It, it's almost um, – it, it's very, very – D- it's it's a full time job at this point. This now this is the two weeks people don't get it. It's like th- we're gonna have to be on because the Patriots they start going. Even my the video that I had Millmore make, I watched a thousand times of um, Belichick walking into the Imperial March. Like <laughs> yep. he, I mean, everything about this team. It, it really it's a blessing and it's the best to root for him. And you know, to be proven right every year. You, I sit and I gloat, and there's nothing anybody can do. I just win every year. That's the year. frustrating part. I have this clip from week four uh, after, I guess, the Patriots had gone one and two to start the season. You did this uh, during halftime of the fourth game. All right, real quick, emergency press conference, halftime. Uh, oh, Prez, you nervous? The Patriots look slow. They're one and two. They lost the Lions. They're playing the undefeated Dolphins. Listen, we don't fucking get nervous. We make you fucking nervous, the rest of the NFL, the Dolphins, 3-0. We are obliterated. Uh, it's a massacre. It's 24 nothing at halftime. Should be 45 to nothing at halftime. Listen, fellas, it's still apple picking season. Brady, Belichick, Porter, as long as we have heartbeats with a class, with a team to beat. The Jets, they stink. The Bills, they stink. The Dolphins, we just took them and we squashed them like a grape. We crushed their lungs, their larynx. We ruined it. This division's over. It's still apple picking season. I'm already booking my trip to Atlanta. Gold Club, Dollar Bills, Thongs, Strippers, Super Bowl. Here we come. We always come. Do we get nervous? Listen, it's the same thing. We're figuring it out. We're figuring it out. 24 nothing. This team undefeated the Dolphins. No one can beat them like a fucking grape. Super Bowl or bust every fucking year. That's how it goes. That's what it means to be a Patriot fan. Do we get nervous? No, you get nervous. It is, that is the quote I always use, apple picking season. It's every single year. Patri- people write the Patriots off an apple picking season. I'm like, well, let's see what happens when the leaves fall, and it's winter, and it's Christmas, and it's cold outside, and it's freezing. We'll see. And I'm right every year. All right, look, you might not like it, but it is Victory Monday. The Patriots, Dave's Patriots, win yet again. He gets to do this because they keep winning, so that's what we're doing. It's Barstool Radio.